All right. So welcome everyone to today's COVID-19 virtual town hall. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mariah Bruner. I'm wellness coordinator here at UCA and I will serve as the moderator for today's session. Um, I'd like to take just a couple moments to say thank you to Staff Senate and Faculty Senate who are co-sponsors and supporters of this event today. Um, and then of course, a big thank you to Dr. Randy Pastor for being here to answer all of your questions. A few items before we get started. Um, the session is being recorded and will be posted to Be Well's YouTube channel later this afternoon. So if you have any colleagues that couldn't make it today, we can share that with them. Um, Be Well participants, you can earn five lifestyle rewards for today. I will share um, information at the very end about how to get your points. And then just briefly, I wanted to review the purpose of today's session. So we have meant this to be a safe space for faculty and staff to ask questions in what I call like a judgment-free zone, okay? So let's try to keep the scope of this discussion focused on public health or medical questions related to COVID-19 or the COVID-19 vaccines. I know many of you have lots of questions about the fall and policies and things like that. Um, we have Amy Whitehead, Chief of Staff. She's on the call today. Um, she's gonna be taking notes. So if any of those kinds of questions come up, she will be addressing those in upcoming communications from the president's office. So just keep that in mind. You of course always have the option to address any questions to your faculty or staff Senate representative as well. Okay, so etiquette for questions. <laughs> we got some great ones that came um, in in advance by email, so we will get to those. But if you have a question live, you can go ahead and submit it in the chat. Or if you would like to unmute yourself, I would still ask you to go ahead and just let me know in the chat that you'd like to ask a question. Um, and I'll let you know when you can go ahead and unmute yourself. We're just trying to keep things a little bit organized. Okay, so with that, we're just gonna jump right in. Dr. Pastor, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I'd love for you to um, kick us off with just an update, sort of where things are at with COVID here on campus and in the community. Um, and then we'll get into some of the questions that were received on email. Okay. Um, well, I'll start off by uh, I think you all know that the Delta strain, the Delta variant, uh, is now the number one variant uh, strain circulating in the U.S. Well over 80% of Arkansas now has the Delta strain. Um, it is much more transmissible than the original two strains that came out, the Alpha and the Beta. Um, and, um, but it is still uh, susceptible to the vaccine. So the, uh, the vaccine, um, particularly the messenger RNA, which is the Pfizer, the Moderna, and of course we have the Pfizer in our clinic. Um, they're, they're still extremely uh, good against even this strain as far as uh, serious illness and hospitalizations. But uh, we are seeing people who've been vaccinated test positive for the, vac for the virus and um, that's statewide and even on campus here in just in the last week, we've seen um, more and more people who actually were vaccinated have very minimal symptoms, a cold uh, symptoms, sore throat, headache, and uh, decided they wanted to get tested, not because they were concerned as much for their own health, but because they were concerned for others. They didn't wanna be around maybe the their, their, their grandparents or someone else who's much more vulnerable or somebody unvaccinated. Um, and so uh, ev nearly every case that I can think of that we've had uh, in the last week that were vaccinated and tested positive had extremely mild symptoms. Uh, ones who tested positive who were unvaccinated uh, obviously had much more serious, uh, much more serious symptoms. Yes, and so, uh, just so, just to confirm, I've had, I've had people ask me, is the Delta still COVID-19? Yes, the, the variants are all COVID-19. They just mutate a little bit and have enough uh, change in their sequencing of their RNA that makes it a little different from the, the previous strain. Um, so that's kind of a general overview where we're at. I don't know, do we have any questions, Mariah, to kind of direct because there's so much we could talk about, but I'd rather address some questions. 
Understood. Yes, I can help frame your, your comments. Um, we've got some excellent questions that came in on email. So I appreciate all of you that sent questions in and we'll get started with those. Um, and then I'll look to the chat after that. So first up, Dr. Pastor, someone said, I am fully vaccinated and I want to avoid a breakthrough case of COVID-19 due to underlying health conditions. What precautions should be taken with the Delta variant and any other new variants? So um, just as an update, uh, Pfizer uh, came out uh, a week or maybe a little over a week ago and said that based on data that they have from their studies combined with the data coming out from Israel, which is a country that was, they were the first country to have a large population vaccinated, successfully vaccinated. Um, and so there's information coming out of there as well as their own studies. Pfizer said that they recommend considering a third dose uh, vaccine for vulnerable people, particularly immunocompromised, those uh, of advanced age or with a lot of health issues. And uh, they floated that idea out there and the FDA and the CDC kind of unofficially commented and said, we know it's a matter of time, but we don't think we're there yet. We don't think that, um, we don't think we need it yet. You know, uh, it's not a matter of if we'll need it, it's when we'll need it. Uh, so Pfizer came out here recently and says, well, we're still gonna officially make a request in, in August and that, that way we'll have to have an official response. So there still may, that still may happen. And I think at some point in time um, that, that may get approved. Israel already approved a third dose. Uh, Hungary came out a couple of days ago. They they approved the third dose, and and they're only uh, recommending it for uh, high risk individuals. They're not they're not recommending it for healthy um, healthy individual young healthy individuals who've been fully vaccinated with a good immune system. We're just looking at maybe those over sixty or immunocompromised, but. Um, and then here recently, uh, Quebec, Canada came out and said that they're gonna approve it. Uh, England already has a plan in place. They've published it online. Uh, they, they, they anticipate doing it, but they also said we're probably not there yet. So I say all that because I think that's coming down in the future. B but uh, there, was a very, there was a very lengthy discussion last Thursday by the um, federal vaccine specialists, a, a panel. And they debated this all day. And at the end, they were a stalemate. Um, they said, we can't come up with a consensus. We're just gonna have to pump this back to the FDA and let them make the decision. So having said all that, I think there will be, uh, for those who are uh, at high risk, I think it will be coming, um, but it's not here yet. It has not been approved yet. And, and therefore we're gonna adhere to the protocol that's in place, which um, you know, we're gonna wait before we, we make that a part of our protocol. So what the um, specialist said was that if you're high risk until a third dose is approved, they said, um, go back to wearing your mask, being real careful uh, where you go, uh, you know, resume social distancing, kind of put those layers of protection back in place, even if you're fully vaccinated and you're high risk. So that's where we stand currently. Uh, follow up to that, Dr. Pastor, someone asked in the chat, um, if and when a booster shot is approved, will UCA be providing that third shot? Absolutely. We will put that out in an email. Um, also, we're anticipating to hear back from the panels back in October, November, some, sometime around there for 12 and under. And uh, if, that, when that, if that gets approved, we'll also continue to do that in our clinic. Uh, we probably won't go down to infants, uh, but we'll, we'll have an age limit, maybe five or six or some limit. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out what's safe to do in our clinic and we'll also allow families to bring their um, under 12 to us once it, once it gets approved and all that will go out in an email. Great. Um, related to that, um, can you talk a little bit about masking? I know that's one of our uh, mitigation efforts against COVID-19. How would you, um, or what guidance would you give um, regarding masking, um, considering what you've said about potential breakthrough cases and things like that. So uh, here at three o'clock, the CDC is going to make a, an announcement and an update, updated recommendations on those people who are vaccinated 
and who may, might should wear a mask. So we'll wait and see what they say. But um, I, I would say that if you're concerned about someone who's not hasn't been vaccinated, but you've been vaccinated, and even though if you're not at high risk for uh, illness, uh, but you're concerned that you're going to go see your, your, a grandparent or you're going to go see somebody who's immuno, immunocompromised who has not been vaccinated, uh, you, you might want to wear a mask around others for a while just for their protection because you, you don't want to contract it, have a minimal symptoms or no symptoms, and then you're around someone who, unvaccinated who's at risk and then you, you pass it on to them. So... But I, I'm waiting to see what the CDC says. We'll know here in an hour and we'll, we'll have more information on that. Okay. Um, I, I know there's quite a few things coming in the chat. We'll get to those. I'm seeing them. Those are great questions. Um, I, I do have one that came in on email that I think is important to ask um, now. And that is if you have already had COVID um, and even if you've had COVID and you've been tested with your doctor to see if you have antibodies, do you still need to get the vaccine? Currently, the antibody test that we have that could be done in commercial labs is not a good test. Um, the ones that we use for research, it's a much more expensive equipment, uh, much more difficult to use. So the ones we have that you can just go to Conway Regional or Baptist or some commercial lab, those antibodies, they're not very predictable. That's why we haven't, you haven't, you don't hear much about that in, in the medical news about post-vaccination, go get your antibodies tested and see what level you are, because we still don't have a good, um, we still don't have good testing. Number two, there's something else called uh, humor, humoral um, immunity, which is not antibody related. It's T helper cells, B memory cells. They hide within the bone marrow and you can't measure those. And those are a part of our immunity. And so they're, they're not measurable by a lab test. You have to do very fancy type research stuff to measure those. And so there's not a good measurement to say how immune you are after your, after your infection or vaccination. Would it be fair to say too, Dr. Pastor, that it also depends on how recent that infection was knowing that there's maybe waning immunity over time? Yes, that's, that's, that's so true. And the reason why the recommendation is get vaccinated, even if you've tested positive, is because um, the research has shown there's such a variable response uh, to infection. Some, some persons might have had a mild infection, and then within a few weeks to a month, you can't detect any antibodies. And others, you can still detect them six months later. So since we don't have a good way to measure your antibodies or your immunity post-infection, uh, the recommendation is just to go ahead and get vaccinated even after you've had the infection. And, and I did that. I had the infection, I'm still vac vaccinated. Okay, great. Um, I had an anonymous question come through on the chat. It says, uh, what risks are there for pregnant women receiving the vaccine? Specifically, are there studies showing the impact on the developing uh, child, birth weight, et cetera? And is there a preferred vaccine for pregnant women? Yes, uh, still the preferred vaccine would be the, the Pfizer or, or the Moderna. Um, I would steer, I, I personally would not recommend the Johnson & Johnson or the AstraZeneca uh, or any of the others out there that we don't have in, in the US right now, but Pfizer or Moderna, the messenger RNA. Number two, uh, it has been shown to be very safe during pregnancy, in fact, women who received the vaccine during pregnancy, it shows they pass on antibodies to the fetus and, and uh, it is protective to the baby. We've, we've seen catastrophic episodes right here in Arkansas of women who did not get vaccinated and uh, have died or have ended up on the ventilator. The children almost died, uh, horror stories. So if, if, you're, if you're pregnant, the, the safest thing you can do is get vaccinated and protect yourself and your baby. It, We've seen too many horror stories for those who didn't and who contracted it during pregnancy. Thank you, Dr. Pastor. That was great. Um, let's see. Uh, do we know how the Delta, excuse me, do we know how the Delta variant affects those who have received different vaccines? So Pfizer versus Moderna versus Johnson and Johnson. You touched on that just a little bit. Can you expand on that? 
Yes, yeah, so um, <clears throat> the Johnson & Johnson uh, recently came out and said that um, there's evidence now that it's not doing very well, that Johnson & Johnson is not doing very well against the Delta strain, which is no surprise to me. Um, so, uh, so there's now considerations of, of telling people who got the Johnson & Johnson to get a second shot, uh, a booster shot. Uh, there's a lot of this going on right now uh, around the world and I'm keeping my eye on it. it it's not a recommendation yet from the FDA, um, but, but there is a concern uh, that if you've had Johnson & Johnson, it's not as effective as the Moderna or Pfizer for this strain. That's right. Um, okay, let's see. Um, okay, this is a valid question. Does UCA know who has and who has not been vaccinated? So we have put out a voluntary uh, vaccine incentive. If you have submitted for that incentive, I have information on that. I'm the only one at UCA that has it. I am a HIPAA trained privacy officer and that's gonna be kept confidential um, with all the guidelines, HIPAA, ADA, EEOC, you are good. We are not keeping a list and keeping tabs on anybody that is confidential information. And again, that is voluntary. Okay. Um, okay, there's a leave question in the chat. It's a good one. I'm gonna let Amy handle that one um, in upcoming communications. Okay, here's a question about masking. Dr. Pastor provided me with an N95 mask since I've had pneumonia twice in recent years, should I start using that mask again? I would say if you um, are over 60 or immunocompromised or have at least two comorbidities such as BMI over 30, uh, hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, uh, or heart issues, if you have, you know, various risk factors, even if you're fully vaccinated, I would definitely recommend uh, wearing that for now. If you're 35, you know, healthy, you had pneumonia in the past, but you have no issues now, uh, I don't think that's as crucial. Um, and I would say we still have a lot of KN95 masks in the, in the warehouse. So if anyone uh, would like to replace theirs, you know, get a fresh one. If, if it's something you've used a lot in the past, go ahead and discard it and, and let's get you a new one. Um, good question about completing the Moderna series. So if you received Moderna elsewhere, because um, we offer Pfizer here at UCA, um, can we get the booster from UCA and can they be mixed? So can you mix a Pfizer first shot with the Moderna second shot or vice versa? So the recommendation is, since they're so available, is stick with the one you had and complete the series. So if you start with Moderna, finish with Moderna, and so forth with Pfizer. Now, the, the third booster that will probably be approved at some time in the future, I don't know when that'll be. There's a lot of talk on uh, interchanging it, letting it be, uh, if you had Moderna, to allow people to take the Pfizer because they're so they're so similar. Um, I think that they'll will probably um, allow that because Pfizer is the only one right now is filing for the third booster shot. But I still don't know. We're watching that and we'll see what the FDA says and the CDC. I've had this question come up with employees. Um, if you receive the Moderna um, the first dose, and you are now interested in getting the second one. Um, our local Faulkner County Health Unit here in Conway does offer the Moderna vaccine um, for free. You can you can go in, um, and and they are happy to take that care of that for you. Um, there's also a number of pharmacies in the area that are providing it as well. So if you need information about that, I'm happy to provide it. You can email me or give me a call. Um, all right, let's see. Okay, I did get a direct message from someone about um, like quarantine and isolation protocols. I'm going to note that and, and send that to Amy to address um, again in future communications. I appreciate that question. Yeah, and I'll just say something about a few of the questions that are in the chat. Yeah. Um, we, by state law, are not allowed legally to ask anyone if they're vaccinated or not in order to receive services because we are a publicly funded institution. So I do see a question about, 
you know, will we not allow people on campus who are unvaccinated? And the answer is, we will not know someone's vaccination status um, because we're not legally required to ask, or we cannot ask that. So uh, our quarantine and isolation uh, protocols should be the same as in the fall, uh, the spring and the fall of last year. So we'll, we'll be sure to, to readdress those in future communications. I would like to add to that, that uh, the healthcare professionals include in our clinic, we're allowed to ask about vaccination status mm -hmm. uh, because this is for personal health issues as well as public health issues. So um, yeah, so if, if uh, someone calls you and says uh, you've been identified as a close contact, have you been vaccinated? We're, we're allowed to do that. Uh, it's just that you can't do that outside of the, the medical realm. And number two, I would say one big advantage of being vaccinated is that, let's say uh, your spouse, uh, say you and your spouse or you and, and a family member were both vaccinated and you live together and that family member tests positive and you've been vaccinated, you don't have to quarantine. You can take care of that, that sick family member, be in that house and still go about your daily business without having to quarantine. Now, if you become symptomatic and you test and you're positive, obviously you'll have to isolate for 10 days. But um, that's another advantage of being vaccinated is that if you're around others and you're asymptomatic, you don't have to get tested and you don't have to quarantine. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I don't know who the first name is, but last name Little. We see your questions. Um, I think those are more policy questions. So Amy's going to write those down and we'll get, we'll get back to you on those. Um, let's see. Okay, so someone is traveling um, this weekend and they would like to make sure that they are not positive prior to boarding the plane. Um, do you, I think they're asking if, if you will allow them to be tested at a student health clinic. Yes, we, uh, we allow any faculty, staff, or students to be tested free of charge that will continue throughout the entire semester. Uh, and we're very liberal on giving you a test. Uh, if you just come up and say, I want to test, you know, we, we're going to give you a test. And so um, it, it's, it's available and we'd be happy uh, to do it. And I, I understand, Christy, I understand what you were saying at the end, at the end of that question. Um, do you have to be, uh, do you have to have symptoms, Dr. Pastor, to get tested or can you just get tested just, just to be sure? Uh, no, you can just get tested. We'll be happy to test you. Now, we may ask you if you have symptoms or not, because uh, there are two tests available. One is the rapid Abbott ID now, um, which is excellent for detecting uh, active infection and if you're symptomatic. But uh, if it's very early on, uh, it, the more sensitive test is the one we send off. And so we may decide, you know, for you, this the better test is to send it off and, and get the results tomorrow. So, so we may ask you, you know, do you, are you have symptoms or not at the time of the testing or when you call in, but either way, we're going to test you. Um, this is a, a quick mask question. Do you happen to know how long a KN95 mask lasts and when it should be replaced? Well, you have to realize they were made for single use. I mean, originally they're, they're a single use product. So uh, to be using them now the way we are for self-protection against uh, potential virus in the air, there's really no, there really isn't any good research or studies to say when that mask is no longer useful. So it basically you just look at it, if it looks tattered, it looks old, uh, it's time to replace it. So you just have to go on, on the way it looks and how long you've been using it. Okay. Um, I'm reading through direct messages and public messages. I apologize. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay. Someone said would, it would be helpful to know what percentage of employees and staff have been vaccinated. Um, I Again, I, I, I'm taking the submissions in the aggregate, um, we will be able to report like how many submissions we got. Um, beyond that, we are not, we are not, everything is confidential. So anything, anything like that that's de-identified or aggregate would be, we'll, we'll have that information, um, but it's too soon. They're, the submissions are still coming in. So 
um, we'll consider that. Um, Dr. Pastor, do you want to talk about the data released from ADHE about our student vaccination rate? I know the data is a little dated now, but yeah, so the end of uh, the end of the spring semester, there was a big undertaking between the Arkansas Department of Higher Education and Arkansas Department of Health. And it was uh, quite an undertaking, but they were able to identify which Arkansans go to college and which college they go to. And uh, their preliminary, well, their final results at the end of April, beginning of May, showed that UCA uh, was number one in the state on our, our students being vaccinated. Um, at that time, we were, if you can, Amy, can you remember the exact number? Was it like around 46 for UCA? Um, it was mid 40s, upper 40s, and uh, Fayetteville was right behind us. They were just a few points behind us. They have not updated that, uh, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they do it again once they know enrollment and, and request names again and try to do that one more time. So I think they would do it, uh, but already we had, you know, 45 or 46 percent at the end of last semester of our students vaccinated. I can tell you this, we, we've been uh, doing a big push of, with athletics um, and we've been speaking to our student athletes and uh, they've really stepped up. They have they've been good leaders uh, to get vaccinated and, um, and so hopefully we'll continue to have an impact on all the students similarly. Like example is right now our entire football team is close to uh, 75% the entire team and coaches um, a little higher in, in our scholarship uh, athletes are even higher rates. So if we can if we can get those kind of rates with our entire student body, we'll we'll really be doing good. Um, if you have already had COVID and want to get the vaccine now, do you still recommend getting the two doses? Yes, um, it's recommended uh, to complete the series and uh, they have found that if you've tested positive and then you receive uh, a complete series of, of the messenger RNA, you've had the two doses, that is the highest antibody rate that you can get. It's even higher than those who've had three, uh, three doses of vaccine. So your, your, your best situation is if you had it and you get you get vaccinated, you're, you're probably the best shape of anyone going forward for a good long time. Okay. Um, there's a few questions in the chat about the PPE request form. Um, we'll make sure that that's clear, but um, for, the, for the N95, there's doctor approval required, um, but that is the correct form to use. Nadia has shared that in the chat if anybody's interested. Uh, let's see. Um, this was just a comment, but I thought it was a good one. Um, Julie said, I think there's a lot of misinformation among the students. We need to, we need everyone to encourage those who are vaccine hesitant to consult with their healthcare provider, not friends or social media. Um, yes. Yeah, so Dr. Pastor, you are available for any students, faculty, or staff that may have questions. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Good. And I would like to say now, while we have so many people on, that we um, we still have a staff available on the weekends to answer COVID questions, but you have to email us at COVID19 at uca.edu. Uh, COVID19 is with no space and um, no space between the, the letters and the numbers. But I've been getting some emails over the of summer that go to my personal account, you know, and I don't look at that on the weekend. Uh, I'll, I, I, I'll view it here or there, but uh, if you want real time uh, help on the weekends, we, we have staff that will be working all, we, all they have been working through the summer uh, and we'll continue to do that in the fall at that email number, the email address. I, I hope other people agree. I think it's a huge perk that you are available, that your staff is available, um, basically whenever we need, um, you know, we've had staff that, you know, just have a sniffle, but they wanna check to make sure they can go and get tested. So um, just a, a quick shout out to Student Health Clinic. Y'all are doing a great job and we really appreciate everything you're doing for us. 
I would like to answer, there was a question that came up about uh, why do we still recommend vaccinations if you could still contract it and, and pass it on to others? Um, so first of all, we talked about that if you're vaccinated and exposed and asymptomatic, you won't have to quarantine. Number two, even if you catch it, you contract it and you're vaccinated, don't forget right away, you have, massive, you have a massive immune system response and before the virus gets much traction, it's neutralizing the virus. So you're having a much less viral load in your respiratory tract and it lasts uh, a lot shorter duration. So a lot of authorities believe that will translate into you being less contagious um, around others. Now, obviously, if you're asymptomatic, you're vaccinating asymptomatic and you share someone's cup or glass or kiss somebody, I mean, that's all bets are off. But if you're, if you're uh, having dinner with someone and three feet away from them across the table, and you're positive and vaccinated, there's a good chance that you know, the viral load you're shedding is, is gonna be low enough to not infect somebody else. And, uh, and, and then even better, if the person with you is vaccinated uh, and, and, and we're together eating and I'm vaccinated, they're vaccinated, I'm positive, I don't know it, I'm, sh I'm shedding a lower viral load and the person with me is vaccinated. And so their risk is very, very low. And then last of all, if you catch it and you're vaccinated, um, your chances of being hospitalized or dying are very low. So all those reasons it's, and, and if we had everybody vaccinated, we had a hundred percent vaccination rate, we're, we don't have to have this conversation anymore. We, we're done with this virus because if you caught it and I passed it on to me, or I passed it on to somebody else, it, the virus eventually has nowhere to go. Now we know that's not gonna happen. We're not gonna get a hundred percent vaccination rate, but. We'd like to get the highest rate we can. Um, I got a, a direct message. It's a good question. Um, if you've been vaccinated, so fully vaxxed, test negative, but still exhibit symptoms such as a low-grade fever, cough, et cetera. Um, you know, these can be a symptom of, of anything, a cold, allergies. What do you suggest? Um, stay home, come to work. What are your thoughts on that, Dr. Pastor? Well, I mean, I think um, we've always advised people if you're sick uh, and you can work, you know, take a day or two off and not come contagious, whether it's strep, strep throat or mono or the flu, uh, it would have the same recommendation. Um, or if you do come, if it's a mild cold, you might wear your mask for a day or two just so you don't pass a cold virus on. Let me give you a little scenario. We had a one, one of the camps here this summer um, there was a little scare and one of, one of the campers went home sick and a, a day or two later, their parents got the test on the camper and they were positive. And so um, we had to determine what extent COVID-19 uh, was, was in the campers that, that were still here. So we were able to test a good number of, uh, of the campers who actually displayed cold-like symptoms. And we were able to do 17 who were in direct contact uh, and had cold symptoms and all 17 were negative. So we were able to say that those cold symptoms are typical, they're just normal cold symptoms. They weren't COVID-19. So I have a person right now just came in right before this for their third test three days in a row because they got cold symptoms and they keep testing negative and they're just terrified that they have COVID. And we told them, no, there, there are other kinds of viruses going around. So if you get a negative test, um, thankfully you've got another virus, uh, but maybe wear a mask or don't come to work for a day. So you don't give somebody else that virus. That's great advice. Um, okay, there was a question I got on email. We were talking very specifically on vaccines for a little bit. So I wanted to get to all the chat questions, but this came in by email and I thought it was a good data question because I know a lot of us are watching the news right now and seeing different things on social media. Um, the question is, can you offer feedback on Conway Regional's recent report of 88% of their COVID hospitalized patients being unvaccinated as compared to the Arkansas Department of Health reporting that over 95% of current hospitalizations are due to COVID um, among the unvaccinated. Can you, can you touch on any uh, variables that might account for those differences? It's just a, the statistical sampling uh, of, of people. 
an example at the same time, I read that article where Comrie Regional had, I think, 23 in the hospital and they said 88% were uh, unvaccinated. At the same time, across town, a uh, Baptist hospital said they had 18 in and 100% were unvaccinated. So you can see within the same community, if you took that, that pool of people and you divided it, uh, it if you spread those uh, unvaccinated, Unvac the vaccinated cases between the two facilities, those statistics would change. It's just a statistical sampling. So when you take the entire state and you put all those into one big pool, that gives us the better snapshot of about 95%. Uh, Dr. Romero, um, he actually quoted and said there were 99.5% uh, were unvaccinated in, in a quote he, he said a week or two ago. So. It's somewhere 95, 99% statewide. Um, and, and it's, the larger the sampling, obviously the more accurate that number will be. Thank you, I think that covers that one. Um, let's see, um, someone said, what's the survival percentage of those who get COVID and are not vaccinated? Um, well, currently, um, if you look, our hospitalizations are going up, but our deaths are way lower than they were in January, February. The reason why is because the hospitalizations are all among very young people. So because the ones who are in Arkansas, the last statistic I saw was 89% of all our Kansans over 65 are vaccinated, which is great. This population realizes my life is on the line. You know, I'm going to get vaccinated. So, so, so they're not getting the infection rate for that population that was dying early on is not getting infected as near as much. It's the younger population. So, it's hard to compare the apples to apples. You know, it's not apples to apples because those who are getting infected now are 20s and 30 year olds, and they're not going to die as much as the 65 year olds. Um, I just got a reminder from Dr. Sobel at the UCA Counseling Center, um, and this is a great, great reminder. Thank you, Susan, for bringing this up. Um, if any of you have any concerns, um, men mental health concerns related to the pandemic, whether that's grief, loss, just dealing with change, all that, um, don't forget that you have the opportunity to utilize our employee assistance program. Um, there's information at uca.edu slash bewell slash EAP. You can also just email me. Um, it's on our website, like I just said. Um, but also you can contact the Counseling Center for resources. Um, they're happy to get you connected as well. Um, if that's easier, you're more comfortable doing that. Um, and she wanted to let you know that um, there are gonna be some sessions this fall on the topics of change, loss, grief, et cetera. Um, so we will be providing uh, you know, ongoing support on those topics as well. So thank you to her for that reminder. Okay. Um, I would like to put a plug in that we received a lot of vaccine early on uh, from the Arkansas Department of Health and the expiration date is, is midnight July 31st. Uh, that was about 3,600 doses. We have about 1,500 of those left, which will expire midnight to Saturday night. So we, um, we told our staff we're very liberal on who we'll give them to. We'll, we'll give them to anyone who qualifies who walks through the door. So if you have a friend or family or someone else who doesn't want to go to the pharmacy, we had some people come in and they're like, I don't trust the pharmacy. I don't, I don't trust going there. They wanted to come here. And so we will do that. If you know someone who just wants a good clinic environment and we'll give them a lot of TLC, um, we've got vaccines we'll give to anybody right now for the rest of this week. I mean, we're not gonna advertise that because if we put it on social media, it's hard to explain why are we changing, you know, starting next Monday. We'll have to go back to just our own population because we're going to get more vaccine, but it's a much smaller quantity but because we have so much that I don't want to waste, we're gonna open it up to anybody for the rest of this week. Okay, so the, the chat, there were a couple questions about 
how to get the vaccine. So that's a natural segue. Um, we wanted to make sure we share that information. So, um, so the, the clinic is accepting walk-ins uh, for the vaccine or you can make an appointment. Um, also tomorrow, so that's Wednesday, July 28th, from 12 to one, they will be offering a special lunchtime clinic um, in case that's easier for some of our faculty and staff. Um, usually the clinic is closed at lunchtime, but Dr. Pastor and his staff have um, very nicely opened up that additional opportunity. So again, you don't have to go 12 to one, but you can if that's convenient for you. Um, and you can share that information with your colleagues. Um, but otherwise- that, can... that, time is, uh, by, that time is by appointment only. Okay. Because we'll have to plan on how much staff to keep here. If obviously we have 15 people who want to get vaccinated, we'll have to have more staff. If we have two, then that's a different level. So, so, so 12 to one is not a walk-in. It's available, but, but you'll have to call and let us know you're coming. Okay. I can send an email uh, reminder out this afternoon then, Dr. Pastor, and that way that'll give you a little heads up. Thanks. Okay. Um, okay, someone asked uh, if you got vaccinated at Conway Regional Medical Center but need a copy of your vaccine card, can we get that through the UCA Health Center? So Dr. Pastor, I've been referring a few people over to you all because you have access to the Central State Immunization Registry. So yes, you can get a copy through the student health clinic. You just have to fill out a, a HIPAA release, I believe. Is that right, Dr. Pastor? No, if we're gonna no. give it to, okay. if you're the person being vaccinated, we can, we can give you your okay. personal information. Um, and, and if, uh, if you're traveling out of state uh, or out of the country, I mean, and you actually need the card, we can actually reproduce the card. Uh, but what, what we normally give you is a, a state printout from the state data bank that shows you've received it. But if you're going to go to Europe, they may be looking for that federal card, and, and we can do either one, whichever you're going to require. That's a great question. So if you have any colleagues that are like, oh, I can't get the vaccine incentive because I lost my card, don't worry. There are options. <laughs> the Student Health Clinic can get it for you. The local uh, Faulkner County Health Unit can print you a copy as well. So we've got options. Um, you're not out of luck on that $200. Um, and so that's a natural segue to this incentive. So just a reminder that the first deadline, if you want the $200 voluntary vaccine incentive, uh, the first deadline is this Saturday, July 31st. Um, and more information uh, has gone out on email, but there's another email reminder coming out tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I've scheduled that to go out to all faculty and staff. Um, and then any of our colleagues that um, just are technology limited or you don't wanna do it on the computer, I will be stationed at physical plant tomorrow. So again, Wednesday, uh, July 28th from 10 to 11 a.m. and 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Um, you can come by there. If that doesn't work for you, I'm so flexible, y'all. Just give me a call or shoot me an email. We can arrange another time. You can stop by my office. I'm happy to do that. Um, and then lastly, I'm gonna share my screen um, and let y'all know if you're be well, how you can claim your five points for today. So let me do that real quick. And while I'm doing that, if you have any additional questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Uh, let's see, there's that awkward transition to a slide. There we go. All right, so you can take a screenshot or a snip, or you can print to PDF, whatever works for you. You can grab your five points for today. Um, please don't send that to me. Please just load it directly up to your account on my HealthCheck 360. Um, if for some reason you have technical issues and you can't get a, a copy of this um, live um, or recorded, just let me know. You can, you can email me and I'll send you a certificate of attendance. But this is the easiest way. Just load that up to your account. You can get your five points. Um, and I'll leave that up as we adjourn today. Are there any final um, comments? Let me check the chat. Maybe I have one more comment to make, and that is, uh, even though we are seeing a, a resurgence of the vaccine with the Delta strain, uh, we are, we, we're very good at knowing how to plan and mitigate and, and manage and change. Um, so we're, we're in good shape going into the fall. Um, everybody is, you know, we know a little bit more, we're more educated on how to uh, tackle this thing. And so I hope nobody panics or, you know, is not fearful. If anything, let's just encourage as many people as you can to get the vaccine. That's going to keep people from getting critically ill, uh, their love, keep them from their loved ones dying. So I, I feel we're, we're going to do well going forward um, because we've got a lot of experience. We know how to manage this a lot better. 
uh, this year. Thank you, Dr. Pastor, so much for being here and answering all of our questions. Um, we value your expertise. Um, and again, thank you for all that you've done for UCA for the last 16 plus months now. We appreciate you. Um, and thank you to Nadia, Amber, and, and Amy um, for helping me manage the chat. There was a, a robust discussion in the chat. We appreciate that. Um, thank you all. Have a wonderful afternoon.